I guess I would just ask you is if there's anybody that's on the fence about the new age religion is kind of like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know if I can say one religion is just the way to go. Christianity is the only way to go for somebody that's on the fence like that. What would you say to, to somebody in that situation? Well, I would, I would tell them that um, ask yourself why Jesus is the only person in different cultures that is presented differently. So there are New Age Jesus, the Jesus prophet in the, the Islam, mm. the new Jesus that didn't exist in atheist, the Jesus in Catholicism, the Jesus in the Witnesses, uh, Jehovah. It's the only person in the world, in the religious world, which there is so much differences. Wow. Others, they are just just one. There's only Why one figure like Jesus? that, and it's Jesus. Yeah. That's a really good point, actually. How's it going? It's your brother Noah Hines, and I have my brother Kareem here today and uh, he's going to be giving his testimony of coming out of the new age and I'm just going to be uh, kind of letting him have the floor and maybe give some commentary and ask him some questions here and there but uh, yeah he's going to give his testimony of how he came out of the the new age religion which uh, you know some people might not be quite familiar they might not be able to quite put their finger on you know I'm sure you would agree with this uh, brother Kareem there's a lot of new age stuff that people don't quite identify as new age, right? Like they might just think it's some kind of practice. But um, I guess I would just ask you first, brother, uh, for the audience, if you can give a definition of how you would explain what the new age is, uh, how would you describe it so that people can understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi everybody. Well, uh, my name is Karim. I come from France, but now I live in Canada. Uh, well, the new age uh, to me is a mix of different things of different uh, spiritualities from, from the East, Buddhism, Hinduism, mixed with different um, practices from spiritism, shamanism. So it's a big syncretism of, of different things. That's the way I would say it. Right, yeah, that's kind of how I described it many times as well, too. It's just kind of a mixed bag of uh, different uh, Eastern religions and, and whatnot. And from yes. my understanding, it really kind of goes back to uh, the Gnostic religion, but... Um, yeah, anyways, uh, actually you grew up uh, atheist from what I understand, Kareem, so uh, yes. you'll have to let us know how you kind of transition from uh, atheism to the New Age, and you can just give us a, a backstory however you want. The floor is yours, brother. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, I grew up in a family, uh, mixed family. My mother is uh, Algerian, and my father is French. Uh, so two religions, but both of them didn't believe in God. So I had the Muslim background and Catholics background, but people who didn't believe in neither of these religions. So I just picked it up, uh, the beliefs. And also I grew up in France, and France is a very atheist country. Uh, Freemasonry has a very strong influence on education. And so I just picked up the, the beliefs of the country, and I didn't believe in God until I was uh, 27 years old. When I was 27, I had a very long conversation during a road trip with my wife now and a good friend. And we had three vision of the world. I was the atheist. My wife was more like spiritual and the other one was Muslim. I respected both of them. And so I listened to what they had to say. And I realized that maybe I was wrong about this idea that there is a God because I knew that I had, mis I had made mistakes in the past on different things. So I thought to myself, well, maybe I'm wrong about this idea of God. And if there is a God, then certainly he can show it to me. So I just opened myself to the possibility of being a God. And I had a very strong confirmation within 24 hours. So from that day on, I was not an atheist anymore. I knew there was something, but I didn't know who, which God it was, who he was. So it started the process of looking for truth. And given I had no background at all, and I didn't look for Catholicism or Muslim, I went to different um, audiobooks, different conferences on the internet. I started with Alan Watts, then uh, Terence McKenna, and then later on, Manny P. Hall. Also, at the time, I was living in Montreal, and I had a lot of friends in the New Age. So I started to pick up different practices, meditation, uh, visualization, create your own reality. I was starting also to uh, study personal development. And so I was touching on different things, psychedelics also. And I was looking for the truth, not only on this reality, but also on who is God. So through different experiences like uh, psychedelics, meditation, 
and also reading books, I was trying to form, like, you know, find, finding the truth. Um, and that was a long process for me because it took almost seven years for me to, to realize that the answer was not there. So um, during that time, I, uh, so I read a lot of books because we had a company together with my wife and we closed the company and we started traveling in South America before moving to Spain. And during this travel, we went to an ayahuasca retreat, shamanism retreat. That was also a way of finding this truth. Is there really something after life? Because uh, there are a lot of documentaries online who talk about uh, ayahuasca and they say that you can see spirits. And so to me, it was very intriguing because if you can see spirits, then for sure there is something. So we went to Peru in the Amazon and we did an ayahuasca retreat. And uh, we did see a lot of different things and actually demons, which uh, at the point I didn't know it was demons. Right. They were called bad spirits, you know. And um, so it was a long process. And then since I had a lot of time, I read a lot of books. And uh, whenever I was reading, I didn't find that it made sense to me, that I didn't find the, 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 the truth on this world. So I was keeping looking for the answer. Right. And that, yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of what I find about the New Age religion is it's kind of this endless search. Like, uh, even with atheism and the New Age, it's almost looked at as almost kind of like arrogant, not correct, you know, to say that you actually found the truth. And in the New Age religion, it just keeps leading you down a path of a little bit more, a little bit more, but you never come to like a, a solid conclusion about it, right? So... Yeah, th that was the, the impression I had. And that's why I was keep I was keeping reading different things. And that led me ultimately to what's called Theosophy, which is the works of Annie Besant, Charles Ledbetter, Elena Blavatsky. So Theosophy was the most complete literature about uh, spirituality. And it was actually, then I realized later on that it was actually the foundation of all the New Age movement. Because all the books and personal development or new age, they point back to the same ideas that you find in, in theosophy. And so I was studying this, studying this, but I, w I didn't find the answer. But what really bugged me was the problem of evil. Uh, why there is evil in this world? And the answer that these people were giving were not satisfying. They say that good and evil are just an illusion and you have to transcend them to go over this and to me it didn't make sense because right. there, there is evil you know? and that's why the new age religion in my opinion can be very appealing because it gives the answer that there is some god or some quote-unquote higher power but you don't have to have any moral obligation you don't have to live a godly upright life it's it's almost kind of the same maybe you'll agree with this in my opinion it's kind of the same as atheism there's no such thing as good and evil and then in uh, the New Age, you just have to transcend good and evil. You don't really have to pay attention to uh, either and either one, right? Yeah, well, that's the true behind what there is the New Age movement. I don't think that many people are, realize this because, I mean, at least for me, I was trying to be a um, virtuous person. You know, I was picking up uh, personal development, meditation. So I was against evil but it's true that the ultimate goal is to transcend good and good and evil but i would say in the in the in the entrance level you just try to be a good person even though if you dig uh, deep dig deep in the theology there is no evil right so, and i know that you were telling me when we spoke before that you actually entered in the new age religion for partially the reason of trying to better yourself like uh, self-development and so get some of some bad habits is that correct how did that go for you yeah i started um personal development actually it was the first step before being in the new age movement well um you know like everybody you realize that you're not perfect and so you try to better yourself or at least that was the way i was seeing things so like for example meditation would be try to control your mind to control your thoughts but also getting rid of bad practices like for example pornography i quit all this during the during during my new age experiences and also trying to work on anger so i was trying to better myself and also trying to find the truth on this world it was the same path but different ways of doing it but at some point i realized that 
I did make some progress that uh, I got rid of, of bad things in my life, but I reached a level where I couldn't go a higher. Right. And also at the same time, I never found this truth of the world, especially this problem of evil. Right. Yeah, and I so, would say with the New Age religion, you can maybe have like exterior, you can exterior uh, like hinder yourself or prohibit yourself from doing certain acts, but it doesn't really bring uh, internal transformation. It reminds me of when Jesus said, you know, that the Pharisees, they clean the outside of the cup, but the inside is full of rottenness and wickedness, right? So, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah for the internal change, you need Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Yes. So when I realized this, I actually cried out to God one day. I said, God, I cannot do it myself. And it's actually a paradox because if you're in the new age, uh, the idea is that you are God. I was already praying God every day to thank him for my life. So it was a paradox, but I cried out to God and I said, God, I cannot do it myself. Please help me. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, within three, three or four days, I ended up um, looking at uh, Christian movies that really uh, touched me. And uh, before that, I had a very strong, uh, let's say, uh, feelings towards the person of Jesus, even though I was not I didn't know the real Jesus I had good impression on him. And so when I saw these Christian movies, uh, that touched my heart. And then after that, uh, I listened to a sermon from uh, the first teacher, Joel Austin. And he said at the end of the sermon, if you want to invite Jesus in your heart, repeat this small prayer. So I did it. But uh, I know it's not, it was not my uh, real conversion, but it started a process. God was using it, right, at the time. So Yes, exactly. Yeah, one thing that I wanted to uh, bring up, though, brother, is all, you believe that you are God, uh, you know, and you can do all of these things in the New Age. But when you come to the truth, you really figure out that you it, it's the complete opposite, that you have there's nothing good within that of yourself. It, you know, in your flesh dwells no good thing. All of our works are as filthy rags. So it's really the complete opposite of what the New Age teaches. The New Age teaches you're a god and you can do all of these things and you're so self-empowered. But then it's literally the exact opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. And it's very deceptive because, uh, like I said, you can you can work on yourself to a certain level. And if you, you see some progresses, you might think that you're improving. But to me, it took me seven years to reach that that level to realize I cannot do it myself and surrender completely and understand later on that God is going to transform you. But if you go slowly and you see some improvement in your life, you might think that you're on the right path. And right. That's why it's deceptive. Yeah, and it deceives you at the entry level enough to get you more and more into it. You know, yes. this is kind of how cult religions work, like, or Freemasonry, for another example. When you first get into it, it kind of seems like a virtuous thing, like, this is okay, this is kind of working out. And then you get deep enough into it, and you're kind of entrenched in it, and the devil keeps you entrenched in it and stuck in it, uh, yeah. you know, by, 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 by virtue of the fact that you're already so far into it, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's funny you mentioned Freemasonry, because actually the New Age movement is an invention of Freemasonry. Yeah. You know, all these people I was studying, Elena Blavatsky, Annie Besant, Charlotte Better, are all 33rd degree of Freemasonry. And the New Age is actually the new Satanic Age. So it comes from Freemasonry. That was the t title of a okay. magazine from Freemasonry. So it's a big deception, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I know that when before you were a Christian, you were like against uh, the per se New World Order, and you realized that like the banks are cheating us out of money and all of that stuff, and you were against that movement. But you were involved in the New Age uh, movement, uh, as we were talking about. And same with myself. I knew like the New World Order, the Illuminati is bad. But then I listen to New Age music and they're talking about the Illuminati like it's a good thing and, you know, being enlightened like that and all of that. So I just mm -hmm. find that as an interesting situation. I don't know if there's anything that you want to say about that. Yeah, that's a good question because actually, yeah, I, I was aware of the new, of the new world order um, when I was or like 10 years, 10 years before, but there was no connection with the spirituality behind, meaning the devil. So actually what really... Um, brought me to Jesus was that when the pandemic started in, in March uh, 2020, I started to ask myself questions because to me, all everything looked like the new world order. Everything, all the countries were doing exactly the same. And so I started to make inv investigations again. 
and I, I found a documentary called The Age of Deceit. And they were talking about the New World Order through a biblical perspective. And there was a lot of quotation from the Bible. And they were leaking Freemasonry with the New World Order. And they were talking about these people I was, I was studying. Right. So I realized, first I realized I didn't know the Bible because I had studied a lot of things, but not the Bible, because I thought the Bible had been rewritten by man, mm. which is actually a lie yeah. that the Freemasons give you. <laughs> so I realized I didn't know the Bible. I realized the New World Order is actually from Freemasonry is, 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 is very spiritual. It's not just about money. Then you kind of have to look intrinsically and it's like, okay, well, if that's connected with Freemasonry and I'm following the religion of the Freemasons, something's off here, right? Yeah, definitely. So that's, that's the way I felt. I realized, wow, I'm deceived. So I studied the Bible and then everything was clear in my mind. I, could, I, I really understood. And that day I made my real conversion. I repented of my, of my sins. I understood why Jesus died, why he had to die for, to save me from my sins. And uh, I started a process of repentance and I started to, to study the word of God and, 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 and see all these connections with Freemasonry, New Age. And I started to expose this also because before that, I was doing a YouTube channel and I was talking about the new age. Mm. I was, you know, because before that, before I became a Christian, uh, I thought the problem of the world was a lack of spirituality. Mm. And I think many people feel the same because they grew up in an atheistic culture yeah. and they, something is lacking. So they are looking for spirituality and yeah. they look at in this. Or even many uh, people that grow up in uh, churches where it's just kind of uh, religious rituals or it's kind of uh, dead and there's no power of God, you know, the New Age can uh, seem very appealing. But when you come to true Christianity, you realize there's actually real power, you know, in uh, Christianity. And there's, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting and uh, exciting. I mean, when I was living in sin, I actually kind of got bored of it eventually, but uh, a life with God you know, is, is never really boring because there's always more to learn about God. You know, he's a infinite God, right? So we can always continue yeah. to learn more about him and experience him. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that can uh, fulfill us. So yeah, I find it amazing that, you know, you were kind of searching for truth like the whole time. Um, and then God brought you to the real knowledge of the truth. But, you know, I think there's a lot of people in the new age that are kind of gen some to some degree genuinely seeking like okay what what's what's true here right but then the devil comes to deceive people into the into the new age so i think there's a lot of people that really are seeking uh, truth to some degree i mean no man seeks god but you can still seek <laughs> and then eventually uh god comes and reveals the truth to you right yeah i think this this is very important because uh, i mean some people uh, in the new age, they are not really looking for the truth, right? So, and that's the problem for them because they they're looking, but they're not looking for the right truth. Yeah, no, they are not looking for truth. They are looking for comfort or experiences or belonging to a group or do some wicked practices like tantra, all that stuff. So these people may be deceived because they are not looking for truth. But there are a lot of people who are looking for truth and they are just deceived. And once you explain to them the truth, they will accept it. And so. I saw that in, in because, like I said, I was I have the YouTube channel and I was doing a lot of videos on uh, on the New Age movement. But when I realized uh, that this was all a deception, I confessed it publicly. I started to make videos to explain this, and some people they just left the channel and they said, "Oh, Karim is becoming crazy. He's coming back to the old dogma of Christianity." But other people were interested and they realized that it made sense what I was explaining, and they actually also became Christian. So, it, yeah, it depends what are your motivation. Why do you practice the New Age movement? You mentioned something interesting. Like uh, a lot of people in the New Age look at it like, "Oh, that's just old, two thousand year old religion and whatnot." And the devil makes the New Age appealing as though it's like something new and exciting and all this spiritual cool stuff that's new and exciting but the bible says there's nothing new under the sun the new age religion is just really repackaged satanism repackaged eastern religions with uh, exactly. a new name on it 
Yeah, it's actually witchcraft uh, that is uh, relabeled to something new and exciting. But uh, what is behind Freemasonry and the New Age movement? In the end, it's called it's free witchcraft because you are the one who create your reality. You do rituals, uh, well, not necessarily sacrifices. This is uh, when you are deep in Freemasonry, but. The practices in, in, in itself is called witchcraft. You use your mind, not the power of God, but you try to use your own mind, elements, um, you worship nature, all this stuff is, is witchcraft. So it's not new at all. Yeah. yeah, and the Bible actually says in the book of Romans chapter 1 that people worship creation rather than the creator. You know what I mean? They divert back to that kind of uh, worship when they turn away from God. I know there's a lot of people that are professing Christians that are involved in the uh, new age uh, or like some practices, maybe like uh, yoga, meditation, different things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to uh, maybe some Christians who might be watching this or somewhat involved in, in the new age? How would you explain it to them that uh, that stuff's no good? Well, I would say that um, even from the time of the apostles and uh, the gospels, there are false teachers that are inf infiltrating the church. So I would say that they would uh, study the word of God to know exactly what, what God says about all these practices. And I would tell them that it's bad because you are actually opening doors to, to demons that right. are trying to little by little take you away from the real faith. And uh, so it's, it's actually very dangerous. And it's also said, you know, don't be of the world. And what is the world promoting these days? Yeah. Exactly these practices. Yeah. So I remember yeah. what Jesus said. He said that which is highly esteemed in the eyes of men is an abomination before God. Right. So if it's generally liked by all people, it's generally not a good thing. Right. So, yes. um, yeah, you know, I, I think a, a lot of practices that are new age, at least entry level ones, are, are are like satanic practices, but the new age acts like you could do spirituality, but it not be involved with the demonic or be, being yoked up with demons. Like for an easy example, I know yoga, you know, it's, uh, it literally means to be like yoked, like with the universe, like with Brahma, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If I understand correctly. So uh, some people would try to say, well, I'll just do these practices, but you know, I'll avoid the, the spiritual a, uh, aspect or maybe some of the higher level demonic aspects of it. But it's like when you're involved in these spiritual practices, you know, you're either yoking yourself to God or the devil. You can't say, I'm going to do these practices, but not be involved uh, spiritually with some kind of force, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially yoga, because yoga is a spiritual practice and all those poses uh, are actually demon worshipping because each different pose that you do when you're doing your yoga is actually from one specific demon. So you cannot uh, separate the practice and the spirituality that is behind. If you want to do exercise for your body, that's nothing wrong with yeah. it. But don't call it yoga. That's not yoga, yoga then if you're just exercising and stretching, right? Yes. And for meditation, it's the same. It's not bad to take time to uh, to ponder of, on your thoughts. On the, you can do it on the Word of God. But if you do practices to become united with the divine, like uh, the New Age movement says, then you're following to the lie of the devil. You're going to be, become gods. But, but it's not how it works. I guess I would just ask you, is if there's anybody that's on the fence about the New Age religion, is kind of like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but... I don't know if I can say one religion is just the way to go. Christianity is the only way to go. For somebody that's on the fence like that, what would you say to, to somebody in that situation? Well, I would, I would tell them that um, ask yourself why Jesus is the only person in different cultures that is presented differently. So there are New Age Jesus, the Jesus prophet in the, the Islam, mm. the new Jesus that didn't exist in atheist, the Jesus in Catholicism, the Jesus in the Witnesses, uh, Jehovah. It's the only person in the world, in the religious world, which there is so much differences. Wow. Others, they are just just one. There's and only one figure like that, Jesus. and it's Jesus. That's a really good point. Actually, I've yeah. never thought of that before. I always it's knew Jesus is distinct in you know in comparison to all the other religious figures, but pretty much all religions, even Gnosticism, has their own 
definition and idea of what Jesus is? Why is that so important to all these religions? Yeah, and that's the thing is because Jesus is the only way to, to God. So if you present people to a different Jesus, then you're already tricked. But to people, they just accept a false Jesus and the devil has won. So I would say that. And the other thing I would say is that uh, they would, I would tell them to investigate about the link between New Age and the Freemasonry. And Freemasonry, what it really is Freemasonry, is Satanism hidden. And Freemasonry is against who? Against Jesus. Not against Buddha or against uh, Mahomet or whatever. So that's also a very strong indication that the truth is in the Bible and it's, it's in Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, our connection broke out for a second, but I was just going to bring up the verse in uh, 1 Corinthians, actually, you know, where Paul said uh, he warned and, and it, he warned the Corinthians and said, I fear for you, O Corinthians, that uh, you might bear well with the one who preaches another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. So, you know, it's even warned in the Bible, it's prophesied in the Bible that there's going to be false messiahs. There's going to be people that, uh, you know, or figures that appear to be like Jesus, but are actually not the true Jesus. So if you're in the new age religion, you need to make sure that you really have the true Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Not one just made up in your own uh, mind of how you think he should be, right? But we, we need to uh, figure out who he truly is yeah, and if absolutely. we look at uh if we are honest about the claims that he made historically they're very different uh you know than what the new age religion portrays him to be right yeah i guess the the most important part is the, the notion of sin because uh, in the new age movement sin doesn't exist but uh, the very reason why jesus came is because we have we have sinned and we are uh, separated from god because of sin so if you don't have this notion in your life and you don't ask forgiveness for your sins, then you're going to be separated from God for, for eternity. Amen. So, yep. And uh, Jesus said he did not call, come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You know, if you yes. want to act like there's no such thing as, uh, as, as sin in the New Age religion, then you cut yourself off from mercy from God. You know what I mean? If you just act like there's no such thing as sin that will actually keep you in a state of uh, self-righteousness and not turning towards God. And I know when I was in the New Age religion, I don't know about you, brother, but I looked down on people. I despised people, and I was like, man, you're stupid. You're not uh, spiritual like me and doing all of these different practices. Maybe you weren't the same, but uh, I know I definitely got prideful when involved in the New yeah, Age. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's a false humility because you understand that if you are in the spirituality, it means that you are higher than others. So I had the same uh, attitude, uh, very well disguised in a false humility that I'm not going to judge you. But in the end, I judge you because I'm more advanced because I believe in spirituality and you are not. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. True. I hear what you're saying. Um, uh and I definitely had that uh, attitude as well, too, you know. Um, they call it like you shed your ego, but in reality, <laughs> the opposite is happening. There's so many things that are opposite that yes. are actually happening when you're in the new age, right? You know, it's like it says in uh, the book of Isaiah, mm -hmm. woe to those who call evil good and good evil and put bitter for sweet and, and sweet for bitter. That's a very good verse uh, for the new age, I would say. <laughs> Yes, that's the, the ideology of Freemasonry is just to, to reverse good and evil. They just switch the opposite. So, and th there's another verse I wanted to share that for me was very important. It's, um, uh, it's Paul, I think it's in Ephesians, I'm not sure. Uh, we do not fight against uh, flesh and blood, but against spiritualities and, and wicked spirits in high places. This for me was very eye-opening because the vision of the world, the Bible vision is that we are in the middle of a war and this war is a spiritual war. Yeah. And we, we, we do have to fight about for sins, but the real fight is, is with these invisible spirits who manipulate people, create false religion, and even infiltrate Christianity with false doctrines. Yep, definitely. So, definitely. The uh, devil is a deceiver. And if he can create a religion that's appealing, all appealing to people and they can do all of these spiritual practices and make them feel like they're connected with God when doing it, don't you think the devil would come up with a religion like that? Don't you think he would love to try to <laughs> create something like that that's appealing to people like that? Yeah. 
Yeah, in the New Age religion, they, yeah, you know, it, sure. it feels like you can have your cake and eat it too. You can do whatever you want, but you, yet you can be connected with God. In conclusion, I, I would say for somebody who is uh, hesitating, just ask Jesus directly from the bottom of your earth, heart and ask him, show me the truth. Who are you? Show me the truth. And he's going to direct you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. If you really are seeking yeah. truth, you really hold that, that claim as a new ager, then why not be open to seeking Jesus? Why not really, really search that out, the whole uh, thing about Christianity? Why be closed off to that one thing, but you're so open to everything else, right? Is the question that I would ask. Yes. Yeah. So, so praise God, brother. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your testimony. Um, and uh, thank you guys all for watching. You know, I just encourage you guys, yes, to, to cry out to Jesus if you're in the new age. And uh, to read the New Testament as well, too. And if you're genuinely seeking, Jesus said that you, you will find all who ask, they shall receive. And all, all who seek, they shall find. Amen. 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 Okay, well, God bless you, brother. Thanks so much for sharing. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.